Larry, I appreciate you being with us on the air. And it's very kind of you to join us here at KTOC. We appreciate you coming on with us. Well, it's, part, it's my pleasure. He won Mr. California in 1960, Mr. America in 1962, Mr. Universe in 1964, and then Mr. Olympia in 1964 and 1965. Is that right? That's correct. You have a very distinguished bodybuilding resume. <laughs> We're trying to do this interview as part of several. We're going to be interviewing Ken Jennings and Jake Gaughan, and uh, we're trying to make people aware of Utahns who have accomplished uh, extraordinary things, and I think you're one of them. And I wanted our listeners to be able to hear your story. I hope that you could uh, begin by telling us just a little bit of background information on yourself, how you got interested in bodybuilding, and what led you to become so involved in it. Well, uh, I was always uh, smaller than average. And, uh, so I, in high school or junior high? Uh, both. I always stayed smaller. And then when I got through into high school, it, was, it kind of leveled out a bit. And, uh, and and how tall are you, Larry, can I ask? I'm about, uh, about oh, maybe 12 foot tall. <laughs> That's where you look in the pictures. <laughs> no, I, obviously I'm about 12 foot. Uh, I'm about, uh, no, I, I think I'm probably about maybe... Five foot something. Okay. At any rate, you felt like you were smaller than other other people around. You. Yeah, I I was smaller than others, but I so I thought, well, let's see now, what can I do to to level that out? And I so I started. Uh, I had a uh, and initially I had a a chinning bar in my backyard in Pocatello. Uh huh. And uh, this would have been, this would have been in the nineteen fifties, probably. Yeah. And uh, it was a, it was a, it was actually a, an axle off of a, a tractor. And I, rigged, I saw a video on YouTube of you talking about this. I jury rigged this thing and thought that'll work. So I started doing that. Thing. Originally, we were just using that to doing doing chin ups. And then we started doing. Uh, no, I take it back. We were doing flyaways. You know, you know anything about gymnastics? Yeah. And so we started out doing the flyways on that thing. And then we, then my my friend, um, my neighbor friend from since from uh, grade school came over, and we started doing chin ups and all that kind of stuff to start, start building some muscle. And, uh, and uh, let's see, how did I? Uh, well, he got. We both were really into it really seriously, and then then uh, he started going to. He got married, and. Uh, and he gave it up. I said, uh, "I said, are you going to go on, keep going till you, till you win a particular title?" And he says, "No, no, I'm just about as far as I'm going." And I said, "I'm never quitting." I, I knew did. right then. No, I didn't. I knew. I knew then that this was something. I was going to get big, as big as I could, uh, through my own efforts. And I and I started to grow and started doing pretty well. And so yeah. you you were what about fifteen at the time you started lifting, or yeah. And and how long did it take till you start noticing started noticing a difference that your physique was changing? Oh gee, that only took maybe uh, probably a couple of weeks. And see, so you've said in the past that you didn't feel like you genetically were going to be very good at, at weightlifting, but you started your body started changing so fast that maybe genetically you were uh, pretty good at it. Yeah, I, I, once I saw myself starting to grow, I thought uh, I wanted the attention of the girls. And uh, you know how you get to uh, uh, when you're in, high, in grade school, you or not not so much grade school, but in the, in the first years in school, you you, uh, you you go to school and you walk up and down the hall and uh, show off. And as uh, as all the class members are getting ready, they, they got that that chance to walk up and down the hall till the bell starts to ring, and then then you go to class. And so I, I liked, I wanted to uh, look somewhat good walking up and down that, that, I don't even know what you call it, but I think all the schools have that kind of thing going on. And, uh, and they got me interested, and I, I started. Did you get the attention you wanted? Yeah, I did. I did, uh, man. I did. And it just grew and grew as you progressed through your career. Oh, man. I tell you, I got, you could you couldn't have. Uh, I, I couldn't have been happier. I was, I was starting to get. I wasn't a bad-looking kid. 
I didn't have any big big uh, warts on my face. So I so I, I that part of the of my features were wasn't bad, but but I was short. And so then I said, I'm going to start training. I'm going to start doing exercise. And I started at the YMCA and started putting on some size. And, and I started to grow. And I'm, oh my gosh, I was I was so excited. You, my dad, my dad said, but even with all that wasting your time over there, anyway, you, you, why, don't you, why don't you get a job and do something and uh, do something worthwhile? And I I thought, well, the no help comes from him. Everybody's been through that with their parents. Did, yeah. How did you measure your success? You know, nowadays people have standards, bench press, um, things like that. Were you bench pressing at the time? Could you bench press quite a bit of weight? No, I didn't. I was. I didn't have a lot of strength at the time. I just. I started to grow, and uh, and I started to get noticed. Uh, the girls started noticing me, and I was. I was what. I, it, it sounds like I'm a maniac for women, but I wasn't. I was just average as far as wanting to be uh, get attention from girls, and I started getting it, and from the guys. I mean, the guys that were big before. The college athletes uh, or the high school athletes, they started asking me for advice. <laughs> I'm telling you, my head got big, about bigger than my than my body. How long did it take you to get to that point? Oh, it was probably uh, a couple of years. And then, and then, how long did it take you to decide that you're going to try to do this professionally? Well, I, I. When I started making gains, and the guys that were bigger than me, they started asking me how they how I did this. I said, "Hey, I can do this. I can. I, can, I think I can do something like this." And so I started really working hard, and I, and I kept doing that for. Oh, that's why I was started in the first couple. Of, no, I was going to say first couple of years of college, but it wasn't. It was actually earlier than that, and uh, and I set my mind. Set my mind like steel. No, nobody could. Uh, I was I was smaller than average, but I really had strong. Uh, oh, I, I could stick to it because uh-huh. I was smaller, and so I had to had to stick to it. And, and I started to grow. And then all these guys that were you know, that were the baseball heroes, football heroes, they were asking me for advice. I couldn't. I always said that, but I, I just that did it. That told me you can do this, but I just. It's like you did the other things, just go for it, keep going for it, don't give up. And I, and I didn't, and I started before long. Then, then you moved to California and you began competing in these competitions. Yeah. And so you won Miss, Mr. California in 1960. And, and that was quite the accomplishment, I would imagine. It was. And then you went on. I, you were Mr. Olympia 65 and 66. I thought it was 64, 65, 65 and 66. And I have, you know, I can see the pictures of you here. Our listeners can find them on the internet. You were huge. Uh, no one had a physique like you at the time. Shortly after you appeared on the scene in the Mr. Olympia competition, Arnold Schwarzenegger went on to win. Uh-huh. And so you preceded him by just a few years. Uh, do you do you look at his career and and imagine what if you had had that for yourself? Well, you know, you always, about that? if you're shorter, you always pine for uh, more size, you know, that kind of thing. But but I knew that that didn't work. Uh-huh. I mean, you no know, sense sitting around pining for something that's not going to happen. So I said, what can I do to make it happen? Uh-huh. And so I started finding different exercises and reading in muscle magazines and, and uh, getting introduced to the other bodybuilders that knew more about how you how you get size on your calves and your thighs and, your, and then I started uh, one of my one of my uh, I should say I will say one of my blessings was that, was that my arms grew well uh-huh. and uh, and I started getting known for, for the size of the arms that I had and so that started to, I started to uh, lean against that that plus and, and and you invented the preacher curl you were the first athlete to really make use of the preacher curl Preacher Yeah, it was over in uh, Vince Gironda's club in California. And what, what made you start uh, start to be interested in doing curls that way? Uh, 
I asked Vince Duron, the fellow that owned that, owned that gym, uh, and he really knew how to train. He really did. And so whenever I'd have a, a a problem with a certain body part, I'd ask you, "How do you? What do you? What would you suggest you do here?" And he and he really loved it when you came to him for advice. And so so he gave me some good advice, and I I started using that and started getting bigger and bigger and and started getting attention and and. Uh, like I say, my my head grew faster than my body. It really did. And and I got kind of, you know, you know, nobody likes a, a smart aleck. Let's see, what's the, what's that guy's name that that was a uh, uh, cowboy star, big, tall, good-looking guy? Uh, Clint Eastwood. Yeah, Clint, Clint Eastwood. He was training in the same gym, and uh, I'd go in there and mess around with, with him, and I put on his boots. And walked around the gym and, and imitated Clint Eastwood. And he says, "Everybody likes a little ass, but nobody likes a smart ass." Well, I you, said, you must have met a lot of the greats. Did you meet uh, those who came after you, Schwarzenegger? Oh yeah. Well, we've known each other for a long time. And, and what's your opinion of him? Good guy. Yeah, he's he's uh, he's he doesn't get his due because he's sharp. Very bright. He really is. He, yeah, he's bright. Yeah, he is. He. Yeah, uh, he's good. He is. He, and he can. He, and he's always he's always joking and putting you down. And but he's good at laughing at himself too. So you put up with him. And and uh, he's a good man. We've been friends for a long time. He's he's, uh, he's got a reputation for being a little bit of a womanizer, which I suppose goes with the industry somewhat. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I think most of those guys were. I wasn't because I was. Well, I was raised in the church, you know, and you. Uh, I, I see here you're an active member of the Mormon faith, as am I, and and you know that's one of the reasons we're doing the interview because you're a, you're a member of the church. You distinguish yourself so much. But were, were there pre- was there pressure on you at the time you were doing this professionally to womanize, and party, and you know go drown yourself in Hollywood culture? I would imagine that pressure's there. Well, it is, but the pressure is not nearly as great there as it, is, it comes from the church. You know, it's, you can always feel that a little bit, but, but you also feel the other one too, and, you, and it has more sway. That's good. That's good. That's a sign of an honest man. <laughs> I would imagine the women, though, flocked around the gym and probably gave you a lot of attention at the time you were winning these competitions. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of nice. <laughs> well, how has the industry changed uh, since you did this in the 1960s? The guys are a, bit, a little bit bigger now, probably because they take steroids. Were steroids part of the part of bodybuilding at the time, or were they? They weren't right at first. Uh, they, they came on maybe two or three years later, and the, the steroids started to come in, and it, and it was it, went, it was very effective. You know, you can really put on a lot more size of steroids. And, and uh, but you couldn't really use them very much because uh, you'd lose your temple recommend. Yeah, and they weren't illegal at the time. Was, was there pressure on you to... To get to get involved with that to put on size or sure. Since then, uh, since since you won these these titles, have you you you've continued to stay active in the industry? You've, you've uh, started a nutrition company. You've trained. What are you doing today to to get by? Are you still lifting weights and keeping in touch with people you you used to know? Well, yeah, I I, I uh... oh let's see let's see what I do. We design uh, exercise programs and, and send out programs regularly to to our clients, and we we also uh, developed a whole line of supplements that we sell. That's really our biggest business is supplements that we sell to, the, to everybody. We make some really good good supplements for those who are trying to gain weight or those who are trying to lose weight. I love working with, with both older and younger, uh, whether they want to gain weight or lose weight. So we've got some products that really do work, help you. That. And do you think that lifters, individuals interested in bodybuilding today, can they... Can they those are, I'm sorry, I missed the first part of that. Oh, I, I said th- those of our listeners who are interested in bodybuilding and who want to look like you did, can they can they get to can they get to the point where they look like you with, with good supplements, taking creatine and protein? Do those really do those really help a bodybuilder? They do help. Yeah, they really do. Of course, everybody has their own individual capability with their body, you know, sometimes... 
know, some person is going to really take off and grow like crazy, and another person is going to maybe grow half of that. But, but by taking the right supplements and the right training, they can they can change their life. Uh-huh. And and how how old is too old to live? Somebody in there uh, who just wants to start bodybuilding in their forties can they do it successfully? Oh, it's probably too too late if you wait till after you're dead. <laughs> As long as you start while you're alive, you're okay. Yeah, all right. But you can generally, I, I said that halfway digesting because you can you can make progress for a long time, long time at, at any age. Of course, you're, the older you get, the, the less your ability to make those kind of um, growth spurts is uh, less. And, and at what at what point does that really become noticeable? Your your ability is diminished to uh, to lift, would you say? Oh, uh, I, I wouldn't say there's. It would. Uh, it would never. It would never go away. It would just. It would just. It just diminish. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've seen pictures of you online, and and you still look pretty good. Even all good. these years later. Well, where can our listeners go if they? Is there a website online where they can buy these supplements from you if they're interested in it? Uh, yes. Get right here at this, at uh, where I'm sitting right now. And and, and if, can you can you throw that out so they know where to where to find it? Uh, well, let's see. Let me find my address. But uh, the address is four 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 three eight eight one. That's our. Okay, great. And what's the name of the? Uh... Your name of the company is Elf Elfscott Research. Okay, great. I'll make, I'm going to post a link to that on our website so our listeners can find it. You, just a couple of final questions. You start, or you were part of uh, the 1964 film Muscle Beach Party. Yes. Uh, you, you were in a few other things. Uh, did you enjoy doing those films? Yeah, they were fun. What what finally brought you out of Hollywood and back to Utah? Oh, it's not a real world. Uh, you go over there and you... It's a pretty girl sometimes. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes you go on, a, they put you on a cowboy show, and all you have is horses. So you came back and got married, and then you've now raised your own family since then. Uh huh. And you, yeah, I got a, be- a beautiful wife, uh, Rachel Scott. I don't know if she wants me to mention her name. Don't mention my name along with body. <laughs> <laughs> And you you live uh, here in the suburbs of Salt Lake City, and uh, yeah. Do you feel like you've received the same amount of recognition for winning the Mr. Olympia title as some of the other guys? No. No, but it's uh, the uh, bodybuilding industry can get a little bit. Uh, what's the word for it? Without being too ass, it can get a little rough around the edges. And, and by that you mean that uh, you, you warp yourself a little bit if you stay in, too involved in it. Yeah, yeah you do. You do. Yeah, it's it's really great to have the. It's a great blessing to have have the the church as a as something that steers you. It really is. Uh, and you as you as you uh, rub shoulders with those that do not have that that benefit, uh, you can see. You can see that where they're starting to get a little bit warped around the edges, and it doesn't look as good or feel as good. It just always is. Has bodybuilding become, in the last 10 years, mainly about steroids and things like that? Is, is that what a lot of these guys are doing, just living on clean lifestyles? Well, they're, if the guy's train, training or uh, competing, seriously, he's definitely into juice, into... You know, they steroids. You can't possibly compete without using it. And how much bigger do the steroids make? Twenty percent, thirty percent? Oh, it would be depending on how much they take. I'd say it's probably going to be forty percent. Yeah, they have natural competitions now. Now though, where they where they test it. It, it did then do, but you couldn't compete against a person that was really taking it to be juice. Are there are there health are there side effects of, of that kind of prolonged usage over years that uh, that affect these guys today, or do they figure out ways around it? Uh, I can't answer that. If I 
I think there was a. Um, you never get something for nothing. So if you're if you're using that heavy, it's going to cost you somewhere. And eventually, when you quit, uh, you know, there there are symptoms and things that you have to go through trying to get off of it. Not so much as you'd think. It's more a matter of. Um, Uh, I'd just say that, I don't know, I can't remember that stage, but uh, when you're taking it heavy, the heavier you're taking it, the more you, you have to pay for it. But I know I've heard of things like the, the dire things that sometimes you hear of, that if you take steroids like that, you're going to kill you, and I've never seen a lot of that. You're certainly uh, someone from Utah and, and, and from the church who's distinguished themselves. And uh, we'll, we'll post this interview online for listeners to hear and play it live on the air this Saturday. I really appreciate you, you coming on. Do you have any uh, final advice for people here in Utah who want to get into bodybuilding? Uh, that's a, that's a, uh, it's an important question. I feel a little bit uh, unprepared to give you an answer that is really going to be something. But I would say for the young kids, you know, if you're if you're young and you and uh, you're thin and you feel you feel like you you're not standing up to what you want. I I didn't say that right. You're not you're not getting the attention that you feel like you need. I think bodybuilders are great for it because it's. Great exercise, great exercise, great build strength, and it gives you a lot of uh, improves your self-esteem. So I think I think, there's, I think there's a lot of benefit in it. And what would you tell a kid who was into bodybuilding and considering using steroids to to, to enjoy bodybuilding naturally and not to not to participate in that type of thing? I would say. I would say I think I probably would be a little bit more. Um, not as cautious as you, as that ex- expression, as you, the expression you use, I'd say. Um, try to do it without steroids. I, I read this somewhere. It wasn't my um, thought. I, I thought it was good. I'd say try to do it clean. Uh, and if, if you can, if you can do it without, if you can do it and stay clean, you'll want to do that. You'll be glad for that. And it's, and it's, a, it's a good health. Good for your health too, because then you're you're training training hard and and uh, and also anytime you take some kind of steroids or something like that, there's going to be some side effects. So it's best for you to stay away from it. And if you stay away from it and learn and read the read the, the uh, there's a lot of different muscle magazines that you can read and learn a lot about about ways to make progress in in training. And you your your parents will love you for it. And uh, and uh, well, you'd you feel better about yourself if you did it clean. Yeah. Well, we're gonna send you some gift certificates for coming on the air with us today. And uh, I'm gonna. So what I'll do is I'll conclude the interview on the air. But I uh, I really appreciate you coming on, Larry, quite a bit. It was my pleasure. And what I'll do is I'll send you a copy of the interview on CD. And then you can listen to it and let me know if you're if you're happy with it. And if you are, we'll go ahead and post it on the internet. Okay. That'd be great. I'll get you over some Applebee's gifts for you. I think what you've done is amazing. And uh you know, I I think it's I think it's good for you know, kids and school and things around here to know that somebody just like them managed to succeed as well as you did. Yeah, I think it is too. I I'd like to put a lot of those those kids out there that, that need some kind of a boost. And they can get it. They don't believe it. They really, you really don't believe that you could ever do it. But then you find out, I am actually getting bigger and stronger. And boy, they're so great for their self-esteem. It really is. It's just great for them. Well, I, I'm 36, and so I'm a little bit older. And, you know, I, I wish I would start bodybuilding when I was younger. But just the small amounts of gains that I've made, even at my age, make me feel better about myself. And I find myself spending less money and less anxious to try and do other things to make myself feel good. So, yeah, I think it's a real positive thing. Well, thanks very much for the uh, 
the time spent. Well, you're so kind to have taken the time here. I think people will enjoy the interview, and uh, I'll get, a, get you over a copy of it. Okay. Thanks so much, Larry. I look forward to meeting you sometime, perhaps. I live in Caseville, too. All righty. Thanks again, Larry. Okay. Take care.